what have we been up to? The biggest milestone we've achieved recently is a submission of our 1718 audit report. Um, it's likely to be published in April. I cannot tell you when. NHS England have updated their, report, their standard reporting procedure, so there are no, no hard dates associated with that, which makes it quite difficult to um, plan our launches and to communicate with you effectively because we cannot release your unit level data until the national report is out either. So that's a challenge, but um, the good part of that is the reason that there is a bit of a delay at NHS England is because these days Simon Stevens is reading every single audit report personally. It's not going to a million. So it's nice to know that all of our collective efforts are landing on the table um, of someone who it should really land on the table of. So that is good news. Um, we will update our interactive reporting tool, MPDA Results Online, as soon as the um, national report is out. And we're going to get you your, your preview summaries as soon as they are ready. So we can get that out in advance. You're just not allowed to share them outside of your trusts. But that will give you your clean um, data. It's the last part in our um, validation process. So it's not finalised data until we've published the report. But we're going to try and get you that as soon as we possibly can. Um, outlier no notifications, positive and negative, are likely to go out next week. So look out for that. Um, and I did want to highlight that prospective data entry is possible all throughout the year. So every time you upload data into our data capture system, you will get a summary of your um, care process completion rates at a service level or as an individual. So if you don't have uh, your internal monitoring system for individual patients to see their, which healthcare, healthcare checks they have, this is a really good point in the audit cycle to put in your data and see which patients you might need to follow up before the end of the audit period on the 31st of March to really get your care process rates up. Spotlight audits, thank you so much for all the data that you gave us for the spotlight audits. I know that, that was um, quite an undertaking on your behalf. The, the audit burden of the core audit is, is heavy enough on you. We do realise that, but we are really excited to start analysing that data. We, we're cleaning at the moment. Um, and we can't wait to see what kind of results we're going to get out of that and what linkages can be made to the unit level results. Um, we're attempting to submit those drafts in March, likely to publish in July, um, but we're going to get your unit level summaries out in advance of that again, um, just as quickly as we can. PREMS. PREMS are coming. Um, we will have sent out your hard copies of... Um, the survey so you can see what we're going to be asking, um, there's some promotional materials, posters, they should be with you in the next couple of weeks. We're just waiting for the translations to come through so that the survey can go live. It's going to be live online for six months, ideally it would be a, a, a quick snapshot that we could then just take forward to analysis immediately but we know that there's just not a good three month period that's going to suit all units. So. Um, over six months, you can decide when you want to intensify your efforts if, if it's not going to be um, all along six months for you. Um, we <coughs> piloted the PREMS um, successfully. Um, they've undergone a psychometric analysis, so we can be sure that the questions that we're asking are useful and functional. And one of the pilot sites suggested that it would help them to um, incentivise responses if we offered a prize, so we've done that as well. And then briefly, um, throughout the rest of the year, we're going to start work on the next instalment of our admissions reporting. Um, hopefully you saw the three-year report we produced in 2017. And that links our data with data that we collect from the HES and PEDI databases. So that's a very strong triangulated data set to give us a, a more definitive picture of admission trends for DKA at diagnosis, post-diagnosis, and severe hypoglycemia. Um, that, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, we've got to start discussions with HQIP about extending the audit. Currently, our contract is due to end in 2020, but um, we're likely to be extended for another two years before we go out through tender again. And we are planning to work with Diabetes UK um, on a qualitative study looking at the experiences of children and their parents attending clinics who have got type 2 diabetes to just learn a little bit more about their experience because the results from the MPDA typically show that this is a much less engaged patient group which receives 
poorer care than those with type 1 diabetes in, in terms of the health checks that are being completed for those patients. So um, if there are any questions throughout the day, I'll, I'll be around. I'm going to hand over to Justin now because I know how many slides he's got and I know what he's like. Um, but, huh? oh. um, I will show you how this works. Um, but I just wanted to... <laughs> I also just wanted to um, point out some of our, our core team members here today because um, um, they, it's been a really good year for the audit. When we, when we got reawarded the contract and we saw how many deliverables there were and how, how there was no extra funding to deliver those, we, we've been running on the same funding that we started with in 2011 and the scope of the audit and the reach of it has um, it's, it's increased exponentially. And, Despite that, it's just been a really good year because we've got a great team and I'm just so pleased to have that in place. It, it just makes everything so much easier. So um, put your hand up, Jackie and Karina and Lisa. Um, yeah, like hire so people can see and then talk to you later. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Seriously.